beautiful and brilliant Anne Elliot is waiting for this guy? I think like, of have, all the guys, I thought he was just a drip. Driving today on Netflix is a new adaptation of Jane Austen's Persuasion. And based on some reviews, you would think they were digging up the corpse of Jane Austen and parading it around in front of cameras. But uh, maybe not. What do you think? Purists will be peeved. <laughs> They really will, um, yes. because this modernizes Jane Austen's final novel in a lot of ways that some people are not enjoying, but I found delightful quite frequently. And the modern take on this is not at all what is wrong with this new persuasion. Roderick! Perfect. Dakota Johnson stars as Anne Elliot, who is wise and a modern woman beyond her years. She is part of the snobby family who eight years ago persuaded her to say goodbye to Frederick Wentworth, who she was in love with, who she was going to marry, but he had no rank and no fortune. And so he was not good enough for her family, according to her vain and preening father here, played fantastically by Richard E. Grant, mm -hmm. like perfect casting for Richard E. Grant there and her family and her friends. And they're all like, oh, well, it's not good enough for you. Eight years later, he is now back. And now he's a captain. And now they have this supposedly prickly tension because there was all this resentment. And yet all these feelings are supposedly coming back around. Many, many obstacles are in their way, including what people think and other family members and other possible love interests. But the, the, gimmick with this is that Anne breaks a fourth wall a lot. Yeah. Flea bag style to make snarky and dry asides to offer the well-timed eye roll. Uh, mm -hmm. When I reviewed this for Eber, I said it's an interesting bit of full circle pop culture wise because you see how much Jane Austen influenced Bridget Jones and now Bridget Jones seems to be influencing Jane Austen because she, in the very beginning at least, is very much a, a self-effacing and kind of miserable, but adorably miserable single woman. I mean, she is drinking red wine straight out of the bottle. She's crying in the tub. She is, you know, sobbing in her, her bed about how, how lovelorn she is, but in a way that is so winning that you can't help but root for her. There's, you know, a very self-aware kind of self-effacing. <laughs> right, I'm thriving, but she's not. And, um, and I love Dakota Johnson in this so much because she doesn't get to be funny very often, right? Look back at that first Fifty Shades movie, and she mm. just showed so much fantastic comic timing in the one Fifty Shades AIDS movie that recognized the inherent absurdity of this relationship. And <laughs> she knew how to work S that. She's always a good SNL host. Right. She's so funny. And she doesn't really get to be funny in Cha Cha Real Smooth or a bigger splash and definitely not mm. in Suspiria. So I can't really think of many roles that allow her to just show off just how charming she can be in You that have kind to go back to like how to be single and even before that date and switch. Wow, I don't think I even know what Dayton Switch is, but um, it was just a total joy to watch her here. A lot of great supporting performances here, including Richard E. Grant. Henry Golding shows up as her caddish cousin. And like, I kind of wanted her to like run off with him. Like they've got fantastic banter. They're gorgeous. It's just, like that's the fun movie here. Yeah, it's hard not to want people to wind up with Henry Golding. Right, for sure. And then, but then, you know, I think the big problem for me here is that there is absolutely zero chemistry between Dakota Johnson and Cosmo Jarvis as Wentworth. Now, I get that there's supposed to be a bit of a distance, a bit of an awkwardness between them when they first reconnect, but there's never any spark. There's never any tension. There's never anything there that would indicate to you why she was pining for this person of all the people in all the world for the past eight years. Beautiful and brilliant Anne Elliot is waiting for this guy. I, like of yeah. all the guys, I thought he was just a drip. I think they have some chemistry. I think what's happening, though, is that his performance leans heavily on the pained regret, you know? And so, like, every time he sees her, he can't hide the fact that he's torn up inside because he's still in love with her, even though he's trying to pretend like he's not and that he's moved on and that, oh, we should be friends now and I'm going to maybe marry somebody else. Uh, but I, I sensed it. I think they have they have a few moments where I'm like, okay, I, I get what this is about. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like... Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about Mr. Malcolm's list a couple of weeks ago where like the central couple is just like, Meh, whatever, you know, <laughs> I, I could see the appeal there, but it's really, it's Dakota Johnson's show, no mm -hmm. question. 
Yeah, no, she's totally charming. And she her, she's doing a British accent. Mm. She's not overdoing it to sound overly posh. It's a little, no. it's a little so-so. It's fine. But she's just so winning and so likable the whole way through. And like, if you want billowy dresses, you know, blowing in the beachy breeze, you have that, you have Country the estates, estate, the estate, <laughs> and you have, you know, the cliffs of lime and the the townhouses of Bath and like for the dresses and the decor and like just the wit, it's all there. But a lot of folks hate this movie, think it's the worst Austin adaptation. But there have been so many modernizations of Austin from Clueless to Fire Island yeah. to even like Emma from a couple of years ago with Anya Taylor-Joy, which was set in the Regency period, but had like a, an alive kind of fresh vibe about it that made it feel new like i think you can Look, play with the we, material a little bit yeah. exactly we've been doing this with shakespeare for ages mm -hmm. you know like where you 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 trim it or you modernize it or you recontextualize like there's a lot of different things to do here and i think that yes sure a a a um faithful jane austen adaptation can be terrific but i think that the material is strong enough that there's no reason why you can't play around with it a little. My favorite persuasion is probably still the one with Kieran Hines. Oh, um, right. Mm -hmm. But I had a good time watching this one. I had a really good time watching Dakota Johnson just be a Jane Austen heroine. And I didn't mind the the the, the cheeky sort of acknowledgement of things. And the thing is, the movie kind of drops it for a while. Mm. Like once things get rolling, it just pretty much becomes a fairly straightforward Austin adaptation. And then it maybe kind of veers back into it at the end. But, um, you know, I, I think I think a lot of the, the to the camera stuff is really just sort of like for establishing who the other characters are and how she feels about them. And it's mostly handled with some wit, I think. So I, I had a good time with this. I do too. And like some of the funny bits, some of the anachronisms, like she says that Wentworth made her a playlist and we see a right. stack of sheet music that he's given her. Like there's some they, really clever little bits like that. Those, some they people say if you're a five hate. in London, you're a 10 in Bath. Yeah. And, and the, the actress who plays her younger sister, who was really great, Mia McKenna Bruce, you know, yes. is, is hilarious. She's this very self-aware narcissist. Like she's beautifully able to articulate how awful she is. <laughs> I found that very amusing. But she's like, I'm an empath, you know, which is not a word that maybe they would have used. No, that's back a modern then, But have fun with thing. it, you know? I yes. Mean. We're seeing the thing where there is non traditional casting that is not right. commented upon. And I, I hope that just becomes the standard. Like, I hope it becomes a thing that's so common that we don't even call upon it anymore. But unlike Mr. Malcolm, where I felt like they really were leaning on that as the, hey, check us out. We're doing something different. This movie's doing, got so many other we're doing something different up its sleeve that that's just sort of like you know a part and parcel of of the whole experience so i'm saying seven i enjoyed it for the most part i also said seven um yeah if you are a, a an austin purist you have 10 billion other movies to watch